I've tutored hundreds of students over the last few years and I've seen common patterns of why students score low on their USMLE exams. In this video, we will go over the reasons of why you might score low on the step one exam, starting from the least destructive to the most destructive to your score. The first reason that I commonly see among students and results in them getting a low score on their assessment exams or the actual exam is following a cookie cutter approach, which means they take a study plan or study schedule or or resources from somebody they watch on YouTube or a blog they read and they apply it exactly what like that person recommended you know and I'm sure that makes it easier it's much simpler but life is more complicated than that and especially the USMLE exams because each person is different in their knowledge their baseline what they studied for their medical school how much they were focused during medical school on these subjects their English knowledge how much time they have for studying and how fast they learn so that's why your plan and schedule and resources should be tailored directly to you. You have to ask yourself, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Where do I have difficulty? How much time do I have? And we can talk about that for hours. And I have multiple videos about the resources that you should study, how to take notes, how to study your world, how to study first aid. And I'll leave the link for all these videos in the description below. But the point I want to highlight here is try to build your study plan and schedule based on you. Don't just follow blindly a plan or a schedule built by somebody else. Because if you follow somebody else's plan and you're not lucky and it doesn't work for you, you won't see any score improvement. It will just stay the same or even go down. Another common reason that I see among students and make them score low on the exams is poor question solving strategies. And by that I mean they know the answer to the information, they know the knowledge behind the question, but they just don't know how to solve this question. And although this is a common problem, you see that most people tell you, oh, I already know this, but I don't know how to solve the question or I did not think about it right. But I feel students overestimate this specific reason over other reasons we will touch base on later but let's focus about this now how can we solve this because the whole point of this video is not to highlight the points that you have problems in but how to actually solve them so if you're someone who has difficulty in this specific section i'm gonna ask you have you tried to solve question banks or assessment tools in the exam style so do you sit for one hour solving one block 40 questions don't extend the time you solve it as if you are in the real exam do it one to two times a day throughout your whole all time period studying the question bank which is over 4,000 questions usually because if you do that every day even if you answer the questions wrong you start getting in that running mode in the marathon mode for the actual exam because if you're solving questions in the tutor mode you never have that urge to get the exam the question right in the right time because there is no sense of urgency also ask yourself how am I solving the question are you reading the question from beginning to end or you have a different strategy and I highly recommend you test this and see which one works best for you because as I said, it's not a cookie cutter approach. Each person is different. So what works for you might not work for me and vice versa. So I personally like the approach of glancing, not reading, glancing at the answers before reading the question, just to understand what is this question about. Because when you're solving the actual exam questions on the exam day, you will have a question from cardio, question from GI, question about ethics. So when you have an idea about what the answer options are about, if you know that this is an ethics question, your mind is looking for certain certain type of information different than if this was a cardio question. What you focus on and how fast you read the question will also vary. So that's why I find value in glancing at the options quickly should take not more than two seconds before reading the question. Then I go to the last line or two of the question. Sometimes you might get lucky and you might be able to answer the question just based on that. If it asks you what is the mechanism of action of aspirin, in that case you don't need to know any information about the question stem. It's a very straightforward question and you just just need to know the answer to that question but most of the time you'll be unlucky and you won't be able to fully answer the question based on that because it might ask you what is the most likely diagnosis or what is the next uh, step in management so here in this case you can go and start reading the question from the beginning but now you have an idea of what is this question about is it about arrhythmias so now I'm kind of prepared to search for arrhythmia information I know from the end that they want the management of this disease so ne I need to know what is the diagnosis what is the problem that is happening and start thinking when I'm looking
looking for this information of what will change uh, me picking the options A or B or C. Another thing I recommend when you're reading the question is to start thinking of the answer and rule it out or in based on the rest of the information that you read. Because sometimes it might seem that Alzheimer dementia is the answer, but one word in the description of the question or the, the question stem can change the diagnosis or the treatment significantly. So if it's one of these questions that are not very straightforward, like what is the mechanism of action? If it requires diagnosis or management, I highly recommend you screen the question stem fully and read all the answers afterwards. Because many times I'm reading, I'm like, oh, that's the correct answer. But then I read the other one, I'm like, oh, that actually is better. Because sometimes it's not what is the only correct answer. They're asking what is the best treatment option. So there might be two treatment options that are okay, but one is better than the other. Again, that strategy worked for me. That doesn't mean it works for you. Try it, see if it works. Give it enough time. Try it on like 100, 200 questions. And once you practice it well enough and doesn't work, try something else. Now, number three, when it comes to reasons why people score low is lack of knowledge. You solve the question, you read the explanation, and you're like, I have no idea about this. I've never heard this information or I've known the disease, but I don't know the specific information they asked about. And here you're going to ask yourself, am I in the mid preparation of my exam? Is this like I'm solving, you know, U World or Ambus for the first time, or I already finished and going second round, or I'm solving question back number two, and I'm still struggling with half of the questions. I have no idea about them. Because if you're still preparing for the exam, if you're still studying the first round of U World, it's totally normal to have lack of knowledge because now you're not in the testing phase. You're learning so there is, this is totally fair not a problem at all just keep going but make sure you take electronic notes or flashcards so you have an easy way of reviewing the information but if you're having this problem on an mbme after you finish the whole round of u world or first aid or ambus that is a problem and here you have to ask yourself a very very important question this lack of knowledge did it pass through in u world and i don't remember it or it never came in u world or first aid because the second option is very unlikely you might have it through like 10 15 20 30 questions on you on your mbme and that's totally normal to have few questions that you've never heard of but if your 20 30 percent of your answers are wrong because of information that you never heard of it's very unlikely that this information never crossed your mind through u world and first aid it's likely that you read them and you forgot especially if you didn't read the explanation that's why i highly recommend when it comes to solving u world and first aid you read the explanation very well you study it you study the wrong answers that actually might help you sometimes get more correct answers on the exam than reading an explanation because you need to know the differentials why it's not alzheimer why it's not vascular dementia once you understand that differential it helps you a lot in you answering the question so reading the explanation reading the wrong answers is very important when it comes to studying from question banks and i have a detailed video on how to study u world for the step exams that you can watch by clicking in the link in the description below but again going back if you are having a huge problem like 90 percent of your questions that are wrong are a result of lack of knowledge and you're saying oh these never existed in your world i recommend you do some search and see if this information really never existed in your world or you actually forgot them also ask a friend if you are preparing for your simile with someone ask them did you come across this information in, in your world or first aid and if they disagree with you then that means you studied the information and you forgot that or for some reason you don't remember that you came across this information so lack of knowledge due to a bad resource is an easy problem to fix you just focus on the recommended resource and i have a full email course that you can sign up to fully for free you put your email your name and you will start getting multiple amazing resources on what to study how to build a study plans the schedule high yield concepts you will get these delivered to your inbox fully for free and you can sign up to this by clicking on the link in the card above or the link in the description below and you can have a very good idea of the recommended resources for step one and step two ck so you don't waste your time studying not as good resources but if the problem is you studied it but you don't remember it at all that brings us to point number four which is lack of retention so you're not absorbing the information that you're studying usually the reason for that is passive learning what does passive learning mean? an example of passive learning is that you're studying let's say a world question you read the explanation and you move on with your life you just read you feel that you know and you go on when you're reviewing you're reading your note passive learning just reading without actually engaging with the information without summarizing it in a question answer style without trying to 
to recall it is passive learning. On the other hand, the golden active learning is a way of learning that you actually try to remember the information. You try to summarize it. You engage with it on a higher level. So if you're talking about your old question, instead of just reading it and moving on, you read it and now you close it, you turn your head to the screen and now you try to summarize it as if you're trying to explain it to someone. That act of summarization helps the information gets better retention than just reading it. So that's why I highly recommend after each question, ask yourself, am I able to summarize the information to another colleague and try it, try it yourself, you know, close the screen and summarize that heart disease that you just studied, the presentation, the diagnosis, the management and the pathophysiology. That's usually the four tenets of every disease. Try to summarize it and say it out loud. It will take you a minute, minute and a half, but you will see the difference in your retention after this. And I had a student who was telling me, I finished you all two, three times. Uh, I'm scoring below passing rate. And I'm like, that, that does not make any sense. So afterwards I asked him, do you uh, remember everything after you solve a question from you all? And he was like, yes, I do. I'm like, are you able to summarize that information to someone else after each question that you solve? He was like, oh, I'm not sure. I'm like, go and try it. So he actually went and tried it and he was not able to. And after studying more and more, he reached that level. So the problem with passive learning is what we call the illusion of learning. It makes you think that you studied, but in reality, you did not. Because again, the information just passed through your mind. It did not sit. And this student had that same problem. He thinks that he remembers the information. He thinks that he knows it. But when he came to summarize it to his colleague, to his imaginary colleague out loud, he failed to do that. And he realized that he was not able to summarize that information. He needed to study more. And he kept repeating the question until he was able to do that. And he moved on to the next question. And afterwards, his scores immediately jumped 20, 30 points. Now, I actually remember one of the points that he mentioned to me that was a red flag is he was finishing 120 to 150 questions a day with the explanation, studying them with the explanation. And I'm like, there is no way, you know, there is something wrong. If you're finishing 120, 150 questions and you're not passing the, the exam, you're not genius because you might be genius and finishing 150 questions a day, but not being able to translate that into a passing score, there is a problem. And the problem is he was just reading, not retention. So try to apply active, re active recall. Active recall is just magic. This idea of summarization or put the questions that you're studying in a question and answer style. And here comes the, the power of flashcards. Because when you review, you read the question, what is the difference between these two heart diseases? And you're like, oh, what was the difference? You start to recall it. Even if you fail to recall it, this act of searching for the information will solidify the knowledge even after you read it. So that is very important and space repetition. Another very key concept when it comes to improving your knowledge for your step X preparation and trying to retain more because you study a ton of information for step one and step two CK. Thousands of pages. So you the, the key is not just to read, to retain this. So when you need it, you actually can recall it. And space repetition is amazing for that because you try to study something, you study it very well and you able to summarize it. That is a key test in my opinion. Are you able to summarize it? If you're able to summarize it without reading it, at that time point, you reach the knowledge needed. So that, then you can save it later on. You save it for like until maybe you finish the whole question bank, give it enough time to be forgotten. That's what I'm trying to say. And then repeat it later. So do your own schedule. Some people like the Anki model where it gets repeated every now and then. I personally prefer to finish the whole question bank and I have it available. You know, if I want to search for something or some concept I forgot, but I finished the whole question bank and then I repeat and that time period until you finish the whole question bank will give you enough time to forget it. So when you repeat it, it's spaced repetition. It hits harder. And now the information transfers into a sh from short term to long term memory. And another advice I have for you to improve your retention is minimize distractions. There's so much distractions these days, even way more than when I was studying for the step exams. You have a million notifications, million apps that try to keep you there. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. So try to minimize this, minimize the, your environment, make it quiet, maybe in a library, maybe at your house, whatever is there, is, there are less distractions. And when you have less distractions, you focus more on your studying. Mental distractions, if you have any problems around you, try to minimize that, try to resolve it in a way, try to control yourself because that will distract you from studying and you think you're studying, but your mind is somewhere else. So very, very important to uh, be mentally ready to study. You have nothing else occupying your mind other than that resource. And the final and the most destructive to students' score 
doors from my experience tutoring hundreds of students is the noise from low yield concepts. Many talk about the 80-20% rule where 80% of the questions come from 20% of the topics and I'm not exactly sure if it's 80-20 but I truly believe that there is a big chunk of questions that come from a selection of topics that are commonly tested over and over. I'm not saying don't study this 80% of the information that are not as commonly tested because you'll get few questions from that as well but you have to focus on the things that are more commonly tested because it's more likely to show on the exam so your weight of time distribution to the high yield and low yield concepts should not be equal and in my opinion students have the most difficulty in identifying these high yield concepts and touching back on the point that I mentioned people think oh I already know this question or I already know the information but I answered it wrong I think people overestimate that and think that it's a question solving strategy while in reality it's knowledge of very very important keys in in certain topics sometimes one word one word about the question that you might know everything about but one word might change the management or change the diagnosis so that's why for these high yield topics you need to know everything you need to know so many details so when you even see one word you can know that oh this actually changes the treatment plan so the illusion is that oh I already know heart failure I already know everything about heart failure but there is still something you did not know that changed the answer that's why identifying these high yield topics studying them extremely well knowing every single details about them you will see immediate improvement in your score and you will get to know what is high yield what is low yield from solving question banks you will know that this question is showing over and over this explanation it has been repeated three times so your mind should start looking for like okay this is probably important because it has been mentioned three times it's also included in first aid it's been tested on the world self-assessment or the mbme so you start seeing patterns of questions if you're in a rush you don't have enough time to do that we have amazing tutors who can help you identify the high yield concepts go over each subject tell you what is important what is not so we can save your time and you can explore this tutoring service by clicking on the link in the card above or the link in the description below we also have a list of high yield concepts in different subjects of the usmle exams that we're building and expanding and making it larger and larger and you can sign up to that by clicking on the link in the card above or the link in the description below so these are the reasons i've seen destroy people's scores on the usmle exams if you have other ones that we might benefit from drop it in the comment below i hope this video gave you some insights on these problems what people face so you can identify them early on and try to resolve them so you can ace your exam if you find any value in this video i would really appreciate it if you hit the like button subscribe to the channel and once you subscribe you'll get a drop down list click on that bell sign so you get notified whenever i post future videos on my youtube channel we'll be posting more and more content related to the usmle exams explanation of difficult concepts so you don't have to struggle with any of these topics i wish you best luck on your exam peace